character death. No matter the form of media, whether it be anime, just TV show you're watching, movie, maybe a video game you're playing, is always a very interesting thing. Because on one hand, it can be one of the most beautiful, memorable parts of a show, piece of media, whatever it may be. Or the opposite, where it can absolutely butcher and ruin what was a wonderful thing, and it just throws it in the garbage because the death wasn't good enough or just was poorly timed or things like that. And today I wanted to talk about that and talk about things more in terms of media of, one, why death is so interesting as a topic when it comes to media, and two, what makes a good character death? Now, originally at the beginning of this video, I was planning on having a montage, basically, of really impactful character deaths throughout media, no matter what form of it. But I realized that's a bad idea, and I will probably receive nothing short of death threats for things like that. It's spoiling certain things for whatever someone's watching. But nonetheless, I'm just opening up this section with, hey, there's gonna be spoilers in here. And if you hate spoilers... Don't watch the rest of this video, okay? And I'm gonna somewhat try to warn when it comes to shows, but, but this is your warning. If you're someone that hates spoilers, this is a terrible video to watch. Get out while you can. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about it. So the first thing I actually want to bring up when talking about character death are character deaths such as this one, where they are quite long, very drawn out, you know what's gonna happen, but just the speech and the everything just leads up to this very beautiful, immaculate moment. But then there's also this type, where it's sudden, instant. You get no time to contemplate what is happening, what has happened, and honestly the consequences of the action that brought upon this character death. Now for this video, I wanted to talk about a few different things, but mainly the fact that I think too many companies and too many things that just create stories are way too afraid of that second type of death, that quick, instant, scary death. And I'm going to use Attack on Titan for a lot of this because if you haven't seen the show, one, please go watch it. Absolutely wonderful show. But two, it has a lot of death in it. A lot of death. If you like a character, stop liking them right now because they're probably going to die, all right? Not only that, but they have tons of different types of death that I can use to reference things. So to go over what is probably the most common form of death or death scene or whatever you want to call it, that's going to be what I will refer to as the long exaggerated death. And if you want my example for this one, it's easily Captain Irwin, all right? Or Commander Irwin, whatever the hell they call him. Doesn't matter. Irwin the fucking goat, okay? Who cares about his title? He's the man, okay? Now his death was beautiful. He gets this chance to have a beautiful speech to these people about how they are going to their death, and it is a suicide mission, and he knows that, they need to know that, everyone needs to know that, and it's powerful. I mean, right now on screen, you're probably seeing some form of it, and who? It still gives me goosebumps every single time I watch even a clip of it, just because I know what's coming, and seeing the people react to this speech just silently... It says so much about what's happening, and then he rides off, they go into this immaculate moment, and that's it. He dies. Now, obviously, there's some things that go on after that, but that's that's really it. That's his death. But he gets this chance to really show off and, and get this crazy speech and have his moment to lead his troops into battle for what would be his final time, and it's a beautiful, amazing death scene. And while they did this absolutely excellently... There's a lot of shows that screw this up because they make it too extravagant, which sounds weird, but what I mean is a lot of shows will have that similar aspect where they have their character giving their speech or their final words or like they know it's their final fight against the evil man or whatever and the evil man gets their final words, however it may go, and it's just too much. You know, like sometimes it's just not realistic, right? And that's where you get those funny anime tropes of like the good guy and the bad guy sitting there talking for who knows how long, sometimes like five minutes of dialogue. And it's like, can one of y'all do something? All right, y'all are like arch rivals. Okay, this dude's trying to nuke the world and you're trying to stop him and we're just having a chat right now. Like punch the man, do something, you know? But this moment was perfect because not only did they give him a, excellent speech which was very crucial obviously to the moment 
but there was reason for him having time. They were hunkered down behind this wall, and he was giving this speech somewhat to stall out to give some time for some other behind-the-scenes things to happen that I guess I won't say just in case. But there was reasoning for him having this chance to have it, and it wasn't just two guys talking for way too elongated period of time. Now, complete invert of that, there is the second type of character death, which is going to be the quick one, all right, as I will dub it. The out of the blue, the you never see it coming, and it just, they're gone. Character's done. Never to be seen again. And honestly, the shows that do these right are simply the best ones, which might sound a little goofy, because when it's a character that you're attached to, you want them to have that awesome moment where, yeah, they went out, but they went out fighting, and they went out for the greater good, and again, Attack on Titan does this beautifully, and one of the biggest deaths that shows this almost perfectly is, leave if you don't want this spoiled, Sasha's death, all right? Whenever Gabby flies up onto the ship and swings out and shoots and kills Sasha, and that's it. Sasha didn't get a chance to have a final speech. She didn't die fighting, really. They were escaping at that point, leaving, thinking their mission was accomplished, and she's just done. No final words, no anything like that, and obviously the impact of her death is shown, and you get that beauty, but as a character, that's it. You as a viewer had absolutely no clue, not even a hint of belief, that, oh, I just watched Sasha possibly fight her last fight, or I just watched Sasha possibly give her last words. Nope, it just happens. But honestly, that's what makes it so powerful, and really what makes the show so immersive. There's a lot of shows, like I was just talking about, where they give too much, too much talking, too much exaggerated death, things like that. And that's just not how the world works. And so to see a moment where a character just passes and that's it is so beautiful and is something I can't really explain. Now, for my final type of death that I actually want to talk about before kind of connecting all the dots here is one that I'm going to call the secondary death because I don't technically know the name for it. And I'm going to continue on the path of Attack on Titan because I have been catching up and I'm almost caught up and it's so good, but it's also really easy to use for death points. What I mean by the indirect death is the person that's not really involved, but still catches that bullet nonetheless. And my example for this is going to be Falco and Colt, who, if you haven't watched Attack on Titan, are two brothers from the mainland that end up on Paradise Island with some absolute shenanigans happening, okay? And as it turns out, again, if you haven't watched it, please leave, because this part unironically had me in tears yesterday, and I think is such a beautiful part. But Falco ends up getting some wine in his mouth that has some of Zeke's spinal fluid, which basically means that if Zeke does his special roar thing, it's going to turn Falco into a Titan, which is obviously not ideal. And this happens. They think that they have convinced Zeke not to do it, but Zeke nonetheless roars anyway. And in Falco's moments of starting to spark and turn into a Titan, Colt embraces him. And Falco tells him to run. And Colt tells him, no, I'm not gonna. And he has a much more obviously powerful line than that. Something about not leaving him or he'll always be with him or something like that. I'm gonna cry just thinking about it right now, but it was beautiful. And again, this sounds goofy, but that indirect character death is so good. It's so powerful. And it makes the show so endearing. And it's, it just makes the show something spectacular. Because in that moment, he's roaring. And you know, all right, well, Falco's turning into a Titan. It is what it is. We can't stop that. Colt didn't need to die there. He had absolutely no, he could have let go, he could have ran away, but he didn't, all right? He had a chance to survive the situation, but having him die in that way was kind of that middle ground of it wasn't super sudden, because you kind of saw it as a possibility, but it also wasn't the most elongated, elegant death, because he got one simple line, and that was it, he's gone. So there's also that middle ground to find, right? It's, it's not just black and white, there's definitely some grayscale when it comes to character death. Now, to wrap this all up, while I could go into the whole spiel of like, oh, you know, we could all go at any second, life is precious, take care of it, talk to those you love, all that good stuff, which you should do, mind you. To keep it more lighthearted, I'm going to stay in the realm of TV shows and things of that nature. And within that, really all I have to say is take some time to digest it. 
Character death in most shows is pretty serious and pretty severe, especially for a show that has, like Attack on Titan does at this point, almost 90, almost 100 episodes. You're very attached to these characters. You've had tons of time. So what I highly recommend, if you're watching a show and a character dies, no matter the method, whether it is the fast, the middle, or the elongated death, take some time to digest it in the sense of don't just click next episode, all right? Because if you are a, angry about the death, clicking next episode is probably only going to make you more angry because they're going to continue on without said character. Two, if you're hyper sad, probably don't just click next episode either because sometimes sitting in that emotion is the best thing you can do for a show of it really makes you feel it and really makes you appreciate everything the show has given you up to that point. And finally, maybe you're not angry or sad, but you're let down. Maybe you feel like the character didn't need to die there. Same thing. Take a pause. Take a break. Step back. Really think about, hey, wow, like that happened. Why did that happen? Why do I feel like it was undeserved? And sometimes it gives you an even greater appreciation as to what the show is trying to do and trying to get across. But nonetheless, hopefully you guys learned something today or feel a little more empowered to embrace whatever character recently passed away and whatever show you were watching that hit home a little too much. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe down below to get some more. Comment down below if you want to talk about some character deaths. I mean, there are some serious ones that honestly I love getting in conversation about because, oh, are they just such an impactful part of a show. And I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out. 